Hi, this is a quick video on finding the sample size required to estimate a population proportion. Uh, if you plan to collect some sample data in order to estimate some population proportion, how do you know exactly how many sample units you must have to get, right? So if you solve for the, for the margin of error formula here, for n, because that's where n is located, if you solve for n, you get these two equations, or basically this equation here. Now this is an equation when you have an, uh, when p hat is known. So an estimate for p hat is known, and p hat is the sample proportion. Okay, a sample proportion. Over here, no estimate for p hat is known, and this is more likely the case. Now how does the 0.25 come to be? Well, that's for taking an estimate of 0.5 and 0.5 for q hat and p and uh, p hat, and you multiply those together, 0.25. Okay. Okay. Let's look at an example here. Okay. In a study of government financial aid for stu college students, it becomes necessary to estimate the percentage of full-time college students who earn a bachelor's degree in four years or less. So basically we need to know the sample size to estimate that percentage. Use 0 0.03 margin of error and use a confidence level of 95%. Okay? So assume that there's nothing known about the percentage to be estimated. So we have no estimate for p hat. We have no estimate for the sample proportion. There's no estimate. We're going to use this equation here. So it looks like we need to have this z sub alpha divided by 2, right? Well, remember, z sub alpha divided by 2 is the area to the right of the z value. So you can get you could get this information on a table, right? We go back to our confidence level and it says 95%. So there's two tails and we have to split that into two. So 5% divided by 2 is 2.5%. So we have 2.5 to the right and 2.5 on the left, and we want the z value that corresponds to the area to the right. Now I could do that in a table, but I can do it also a little quicker if we just go down here and open up StatCrunch. There's a calculator in StatCrunch, right? Stat calculator normal. Z is normal, right? We use the mean of 0 and standard deviation of 1, and that means these are z values. Now we want the position to the right, the area to the right, and we want that area to be 2%, 2.5%, excuse me, 0.025, 2.5%. We compute that, and we see that our z alpha divided by 2 is 1.9. Five, nine, nine, six, four. I'll use all the information. Okay, so that's that information. I got it from StatCrunch using the calculator in there. Now we have this portion. Now we need to know e. E was given to us. Use a 0 0.03 margin of error. So e is 0 0.03. So now we have all the information to find this answer. N equals the Z value that corresponds to 2.5% to the right is 1.959964 to the second power times 0 0.25 all over 0 0.03 squared. And this will be equal to the number of people that we need to have. All right, put it in the calculator. I'll do the numerator. I'll do it in the calculator here. 1.959964 to the second power times 0.25 and then divided by 0 0.03 to the second power 
1067.07. Now look at this though. It's 0 0.07, but that's 0 0.07 of a person. In order to get the estimate we need though, we must go up to the next full person. So 1068, and that's the number of people we need. So assume that there's nothing known about the percentage to be estimated, 1068. 1,068. Okay. Now the other one down below here says, assume that prior studies have shown that 55, about 55 percent of full-time students earn a bachelor's degree in four years or less. Now we're giving, we're given um, an estimate of p hat. We're given an estimate of the sam of a sample proportion, right? Okay. So let's create our new equation over here n is going to be equal to that same z value, right? 1.959964 squared, but this time we use p hat. Okay, well what's p hat? Well, p hat is where the 55%. It's the it's the estimate of the of the sample proportion. So 0.55 now how do I get q hat? Well q hat is just 1 minus p hat. Okay, so if that's 0.55, we must have 0.45. And then that, of course, is all over 0 0.03 squared. All right, let's put that in the calculator. I've got my 1.9. 59964 to the second power times 0.55 times 0.45. Of course, I'm doing this the long way. If you can put it in correctly, you know, you can put it all in at one time. But I'm just doing it piece by piece, so I know I'm calculating the numerator there. Now I'm calculating the denominator. And we see we have 1,056.4. Again, we round up. So we have 1,057. So this one would be 1,057. And that's what we see there. We can see that they're not very far away from each other, right? Uh, 11. So the last question here, does the added knowledge of Part B have much of an effect on the sample size? It lowers it knowing the, our estimate, but no, it does, the using the additional survey does not have much effect. It just reduces the sample size slightly, okay? And you can kind of see also if we take a look at like how far did it go down? It went down 11. 11 divided by starting at 1068. It went down 1%. Okay, so that's how you're going to find um, the sample size that's required to estimate a population proportion. If there are any questions on this, please post in discussion.